today to be joined in the latest of our episodes of our franchise documentary looking at cult classic TV series. This week in focus, we're going to look at the cult classic TV series Walker, Texas Ranger. And I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only Judson Mills, who played the role of Francis Gage in season seven and season eight of Walker, Texas Rangers, uh, appeared in over 46 episodes. Uh, first of all, uh, Judson, a pleasure to have you t today with us. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate you having me as well. It's nice to be here. I hope you guys are well over there. I hope everybody's healthy and sane over there. <laughs> I suppose, uh, Judson, uh, just uh, speaking to you off air before we started, you mentioned, and it's very important, 20 years now since Walker, Texas Ranger. I suppose in some times, does it feel like a lifetime ago or other times as well, when you're out and about, does it almost feel like yesterday that you run? say, uh, shooting episodes and uh, interacting with sort of Chuck Norris. Does his does his time stood still in terms of your memories of Walker, Texas Ranger? I think you described it pretty well. There's moments where uh, it does seem just like yesterday. Sometimes I'll see some clips on Instagram. You know, there's some fan pages uh, or I'll come across something, you know, because they're still airing episodes over here. So I'll, uh, I'll come across to see something and it'll take me back. I'll remember it. Just yesterday, I saw something about the bear episode when I get attacked by the bear on Instagram. And I remembered that day and being by the lake. And, but there's other times where it certainly does seem like a lifetime ago. I miss those guys, though. Uh, it was a really fun time. And, and I, I had some wonderful friendships and relationships on that, on that show. So I, I miss it for sure. Uh, Judson, I suppose uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, nine seasons running from 1993 to 2001. Uh, you came in there, uh, you made your debut at season seven. So in terms of um, Walker, Texas Ranger, I suppose it was a phenomenon by that stage, by season seven, the sort of well the sort of established and such. So get to land a geek on that sort of Walker, Texas Ranger beside uh, Chuck Norris, uh, must be a sort of a boy sort of dream come true, especially a Texas sort of young boy uh, to land that sort of role. And how did that come about for you? Uh, it certainly was a dream come true. Uh, you know, Chuck, Chuck Norris is not a bad set of coattails to ride. Uh, as they say, we have a saying over here, you can ride somebody's coattails, you know, uh, to, to start a more success. And, and he's uh, he certainly was a great, a great candidate. Uh, the show was super popular. I think at that time, uh, around 2000 or so, 1999, when I came on, they were, were the number one action show in the world. And uh, I think they were spending more money an episode than any other show on TV. We were um, blowing stuff up and had all kinds of crazy car stunts going all the time. There was really no, um, there was no CGI yet. Yeah. to speak of on television so we were doing everything for real shortly thereafter uh, they started working with cgi and so the the stakes sort of went up in the action world you know you could you could do things with computer generated and really make some crazy stuff but uh, it, it was fun to do everything uh, everything on the day all the fights all the car gags all the explosions all the stuff all the fire it was all real but um i got the job in a pretty standard way, I think I'd auditioned for the show maybe once before, and I didn't get okay. that. I didn't get that role. I'd been working quite a bit at that point in time, doing movies and TV, and um, I got I got the, the call for the for the audition, and uh, I went in a couple of times. The last time I, I met Chuck, you know, and we we read together in there, and uh, and they called me and. And said, I got it. I remember where I was. I remember the house I was in at the time. I remember just dropping to my knees and going, thank you, Lord, you know, and uh, it was a great ride. It, it certainly was a privilege. And the show was was huge at that time. So it was really exciting uh, to be able to um, to play a hero like that, to play somebody who comes in and saves the day and um, is, is a you know beacon of truth, almost like a superhero sort of it was really fun. It was a, it was an honor. And uh, and a great experience. I enjoyed it. And I suppose, uh, Judson, your character, Francis uh, Gage, uh, was it when you initially when you started off and you landed the role, did you think to yourself it was going to be a recurring role maybe for two or three episodes maybe per season? Or did you know from the start that you were going to be tied in long term? 46 episodes is an awful lot of episodes. It's I a know lot of shows. That, 
what Walker Texas Rangers I know it had in total 196 episodes but anyone who does 46 episodes in a series you is there for a long time yeah yeah that was a time when television was a little different you know uh we did we did 22 episodes a year at that time you know and it, it took around a week and a half to shoot an episode. So you were busy for the majority of the year. Uh, when I got the job, I knew it was a contract role. I knew I was a new addition to the show. Uh, I knew that uh, myself and Nia Peoples, who plays who played my partner, Sydney, I knew that they were bringing us on to sort of uh, expand the storylines and bring in a younger demographic and, and spice some things up. So I knew I had, I had some... Uh, some shows ahead of me to do. I knew there was going to be some time out there. Um, we were, I was really excited when we got, you know, picked up for another season after the first season I was on, but uh, yeah, TV was different. You know, now they're doing things with uh, streaming and Netflix and Hulu and some of these stations where oftentimes a season will only be, you know, five or six episodes at seven or eight episodes. And um, they call that a season. Now uh, I think, I think the, the episodes oftentimes are, shot a little bit more like a mini movie and so they take a little longer to shoot and there's a little more production value and a little more time put into them so your seasons although the episode count is short are still sometimes pretty full you know but uh but everything's changing you know things things evolve and so uh that was a that was a a busy time man we worked hard on that show we worked hard on that show and I suppose you, Judson, you mentioned you worked hard on that sort of show. What would a weekly sort of uh, week look like on on set in terms of Walker, Texas Rangers? From the Monday when you come in and you'd sit down in front of the table, you get that sort of script uh, introduced, you see what the storylines are, you have, you flush it out, maybe have that sort of bit of a table read. And from there on until the final release of the actual show, are we talking seven eight nine days uh what does what did a weekly week look like okay. look like for you on set of walker Texas? so Ranger? so we actually because the show had been going on for a while we didn't really uh as i remember it do table reads at the beginning of the week everybody pretty much knew their character knew their story our formula was pretty pretty intact you know what i mean there was usually uh you know four segments to a show 15 minutes 10 minute segments right in between commercial breaks and there was usually a, a fight in each segment so as our week would start you know we would we would come in uh, I, my, my stunt double and my trainer my sensei who choreographed all my fights and, and taught me how to you know really uh do most of my that's where i learned the bulk of my action skills on tv his name is jj perry Super okay, talented. Yeah, I've heard JJ of him. Perry. So super talented guy. Just doubled Hugh Jackman and Mel Gibson and a lot of other guys. Big second unit director doing some of his own work now. He's a guy you should have on here. He's fast. He's been he's worked with Stallone on the Expendables. Like he's he's really, really talented. And uh so we would get together and we would look at the scripts and we would look at the locations, him and I on our own, and we would sort of try to plan our fights out for the week. We'd sometimes go to the location if we could, or, uh, you know, we'd figure out where we were at. And then we'd try to come up with, you know, cool moves and different kinds of things. You know, if we could get to a location, we'd look at a bar and go, okay, well, look at that. There's okay. So you could, we could do a flip off the end of that bar and crash into a table. And then there's a balcony here. What if, you know, a guy came down, you know, we'd figure it out, you know, we'd, we'd try to map it out. And then oftentimes after work, we would uh, go to the gym or go to somewhere uh, nearby, uh, a basketball court or something indoors and we where they had mats and we would rehearse stuff and play with different things and you know he'd teach me different combinations and different tricks and, and whatnot so usually each day at the beginning of the week i, I want to say our episodes took us around six or seven days to film so it was a little longer than a, than a business week. It, we didn't shoot on the weekend. So it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I think usually there would be another Monday or Tuesday like that to, to uh, finish sometimes. But, um, you know, we usually have a fight every day uh, just, or, or most days because there was, you know, all of us, there was Chuck fighting, there was Clarence fighting, there was Nia fighting, there was, I was fighting. So each day, you know, we'd go to the location, we'd get the fights done, and then we'd do our 
dialogue afterward, you know. Um, but uh, it was hot, you know, Texas is hot. So uh, there was sometimes they'd have to have, you know, we'd be on the on a rooftop somewhere in downtown Dallas or whatever, fighting these guys and it'd be 105 degrees or something like that. So they'd have wardrobe on the side with like three or four shirts and a hairdryer. And so I'd do a take or two, then I'd have to rip my shirt off, put a new shirt on. They'd blow dry that shirt out while I put, while I did it with another shirt, but we were just all soaking wet all the time. Uh, but it was great, man. It was a lot of fun. We stayed in great shape. Uh, we had a lot of laughs. Uh, it was a really wonderful set. You know, Eric Norris, his son, and Mike Norris, uh, his son, um, uh, Eric, Mike, and then there's Aaron, who was his brother, directed. So it was a it was a family affair. You know, everybody was involved, and it was a very close knit group. And uh, a lot of respect, a lot of a lot of honor. The martial arts was, you know, the backbone of of how they did things in terms of respect and discipline. And it was really uh, it was a really good time. Yeah, and I suppose one thing about uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, in terms of it looked at this old sort of, it was really a sort of Texas sort of show, but it also brought in the sort of Native American sort of touch as well. So it was deep in sort of roots in terms of the heritage of Texas and in terms of the very core to what a Texas Ranger was like in terms of, it was very precise in terms mm -hmm. of the history, the knowledge, the background, the whole culture of what it was like in the state of Texas, everything in terms of the liar, the sort of thing was very much to the core. So trying to keep to that audience so to appeal to that real diehard sort of Texas sort of stranglehold that it had. Yeah, yeah, they were very good about about trying to include the native culture and trying to keep it diverse, uh, trying to be conscious of of uh, you know telling those stories as well and paying homage and respect to the to the natives uh, and, um, and and all cultures for that matter. You know, it was mm. it was it was a, a little before its time in in some of the, the storylines we had in terms of the diversity so that, that i was proud of that it was cool but you're right there was oftentimes there was a little mystical element some there sometimes in there you know um so uh it, it made it uh it, it made it um uh, kind of spiritual it had kind of spiritual undertones to it there was a lot of um christian elements and ideas in there as well as native american um traditions so yeah, I think I think you're uh, you're right on the money with that. Yeah, and I suppose uh, Judson. I suppose thank God, nearly uh, all the cast is still around, except for one exception, uh, Noble yeah. Willingham, who played uh, C. D. Parker, Lord Mercy Soul. And uh, mm -hmm. tell me about your interactions uh, working uh, with uh, Noble. And Noble almost appeared to me like the chain of command, where you have a, a general and your sort of lieutenants and. You were like his lieutenants, and he was the the general, even though he wasn't actually involved. And almost felt like he was giving you your orders and running you around and telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing. Yeah, he was a he was a wonderful guy, and everybody on set had a tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, he had been around forever, and uh, he had been uh, you know in a lot of shows and a lot of movies. He had a lot of experience. So um, everybody, everybody really looked to him and, and respected him in a way where you're exactly right. He, he sort of was our general or our, or our captain in a way. Uh, real funny guy, too. He always had, a, always had a good joke in his pocket, always brought an element of humor uh, to, the, to the table. And uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a big loss when, uh, when, he, when he went to, uh, to meet his maker. Um, we, we missed him real dearly. I, I have a lot of fond memories of, of working with him. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Johnson, uh, your relationship uh, with Nia's uh, character, the sort of hinted relationship with sort of Sidney Cook and the sort of, it sort of gave off a sort of, uh, the characters had a bit of an attraction to each other. Was that sort of mimicked uh, the sort of the, the main primary sort of cast in terms of uh, Chuck Norris and Sherry Wilson, their sort of, interaction it sort of happened the sort of same way and it was heading down the same trajectory was that the sort of pipeline they were going on like to create a sort of second love angle yeah it uh it was that classic 
uh, sort of storyline where you know there was the there was the attraction the obvious attraction but you know we our characters her in particular sort of tried to hide it and minimize it you know there was a lot of sort of sexual tension running along and underneath things um we tried to set up a scenario where people were always like come on come on you know wanted us to get together there's a lot of fan sites and stuff on youtube about us and uh, people wanting us to fall in love and get together so um she's wonderful i really we've remained friends afterward also she's just gorgeous and such a beautiful soul so it wasn't it wasn't difficult you know it wasn't difficult to to play all that at the time i i have to be honest i had a big crush on nia while we were down there uh but uh yeah you hit the nail right on the head there too it was definitely something we were pushing and hoping people gravitated to but we also tried to keep it subtle so that you never really got the payoff you were always hoping and there was almost a kiss here and there, or there was almost a, you know, a coming together there, you know, and the, until the end where it got a little, a little deeper, but um, it was a lot of fun playing with that. And I think people really enjoyed it, responded to it well. And I suppose at the time, I suppose uh, Judson, um, uh, Chuck Norris was a big, massive international star. And by the time you got on there in season seven with him, uh, a worldwide sort of famous star. And in terms of managing that, in terms of uh, his personal life and his sort of work life and coming to the set and sort of thing, was it uh, the show success that he sort of revel in it or, uh, 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 in terms of that? Or was the sort of the huge sort of draw, that sort of fan base, that sort of was a distraction at some times? Because I imagine he was swamped or swarmed uh, wherever he went, uh, basically based on uh, Walker, Texas Ranger. And that yeah. can be sometimes it can be a bit uh, it, the, the intense, that sort of feeling. You just want to socially distance yourself as the saying goes from it. Yeah. Now, Chuck, uh, Chuck, despite being as, as popular and as famous and as uh, well known as he was, he had a, always had a really humble air about him. Very simple guy. Um, he was very uh, open and genuine. Um, he, he and I developed a friendship very quickly. Um, and he was very, very accommodating to me and very gracious in, uh, in his inclusion of me in the story and in his life, in his family and his team, you know, because he really was the patriarch of the, the set and the show and everything. Um, and there, you know, there was always people who were, who were interested in getting a picture or an autograph and he was really generous and very gracious. He had a team with him that sort of looked after him, you know, when we'd go places, he needed a security guy and some stuff around usually. And he'd let them do the job of, you know, getting people, in and out and, and and he always tried to give pictures and autographs when he could now there's always times when you sometimes you got to get back to work yeah. you know but um he's really one of those what you see is what you get kind of guys he's very similar to a lot of the characters he plays he's a man of few words uh he does have a great sense of humor which you don't always see in in his work but uh we had a lot of laughs and, uh, and I'm forever grateful for how he took me under his wing. We developed a really cool relationship and he really uh, gave me quite a bit of respect and quite a bit of um, latitude and uh, freedom on the show. And uh, we, we really had some great times. There were some really great moments over the course of the two years. Um, I, I was very appreciative. And I suppose uh, Judson, in terms of, um, your own character as well, uh, coming in on the set um, in terms of uh, Walker, Texas Ranger. It almost had that sort of Batman, sort of Robin feel to it, where Chuck Norris was Batman and uh, Clar uh, Clar Clarence Gillard was uh, James Trevett was sort of Robin sort of feel and uh, that sort of thing. And you're coming into a show and you're trying to establish yourself as a character onto this sort of team. Was it sort of difficult enough to think to yourself, how am I going to break up this Batman Robin sort of combination and form a sort of a, a third wheel as such. Right. You know what? Because they hired Nia and I at the same time, and we sort of had our own, um, you know, Superman and Wonder Woman kind of, you know, we had our own little thing happening. So a lot of our storylines, a lot of our scenes, a lot of our stuff 
was us on our own. We would go undercover and work on things. We would be, you know, pursuing, you know, different kinds of cases and criminals or whatever on our own. So it was helpful to have her and that support uh, in, in, in regards to what you're talking about, because those guys were solid. They'd been together for seven years, you know, Chuck and Clarence had a rhythm. They had a, they had an understanding of one another's timing. And so they were, they were great. Like you say, they were definitely a Batman and Robin team and there was no breaking that up. So I was happy to have Mia, you know, around and, and have some support uh, so that we could do our own thing. And I, I didn't, uh, I didn't end up feeling too much like a third wheel. And I suppose one of the most interesting storylines uh, in terms of my research about your character on the show was you, uh, one episode, you uh, lose your hearing sort of temporarily. Yes. And uh, how, how was, as an actor, how was that sort of play? How did you sort of play those reactions in terms of uh, being deaf, uh, the, the drama, the sort of tension of not being able to sort of uh, hear as such. Is it a sort of a, a challenging sort of role? Do you sort of need extra time to see your facial reactions back to sort of how do you look in terms of playing sort of deaf? Because sometimes you you may pretend to look deaf, but if you if you don't see yourself in the mirror, you can obviously give away glitches or hints that you can actually hear something, which can yeah. obviously be seen to the viewers. Yeah. There, there was an extra uh, bit of attention and presence that was required to, to work with that. I, I spent a little bit of time because uh, we didn't have a lot of time. You know, our, our, yeah. our, our schedule and our pace was pretty, you know, pretty set and pretty. So there wasn't a lot of extra time, but I spent whatever time I could pre preparing for the episode. And during the episode, I worked with some folks locally in the area that yeah. were deaf. Uh, I wanted to be very respectful of um, the deaf community and um, uh, of, of people with hearing challenges in, in general. So I made sure to, to go to someplace locally and meet with some people uh, okay. that could talk with me about it and give me some idea about what it's like and, and help me with a little bit of how, what, what it feels like and some of the things uh, that you are able because when you when you can't hear your other senses uh, or if you can't see, whatever the case may be, uh, it's my understanding that your other senses improve. And yeah. so there's, there's an awareness um, a lot of times that people that can't hear that are deaf uh, develop. There's a sort of a, a sixth sense, if you will, about energy and about uh, uh, spatial awareness and, and things coming you know, up behind you and around you. Um, there's an uh, acute uh, vision sometimes improves and, and the things that you notice uh, and are aware of uh, are different. So um, I did spend some time trying to prepare. I also wore earplugs for most of this, most of the episode and tried to, sh tried to cut my hearing off, you know, okay. when I, when I was wor working so that I genuinely couldn't hear. Um, okay. Depending on, you know, sometimes people that can't hear have tinnitus really bad and there's a, there's a humming yeah. or there's a sound. Other times people have no sound at all. So it depends. Uh, but I, I tried to, to be very conscious of doing the, the best that I could to make that real and to, you know, be respectful of, of the deaf community. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Judge, and I've mentioned all the cast, and I suppose uh, before I ask you the sort of final question, I just want to touch on uh, someone that will be appearing next on our documentary, uh, Sherry Wilson. Uh, Sherry Wilson, who played uh, the character Alex Cahill. And uh, what are your, some of your favourite memories of Sherry? And I've no doubt she'd be glad to hear them when I put her in. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We had such a great time. I, whenever I think about Cherie, I always just see her with the biggest smile on her face. Um, her two boys were little back, back in those, those days. They're, they're grown now. Uh, but her boys were, uh, were there in Dallas. Uh, I remember a, a, a lot of fond dinner parties and, and uh, dinners at, at her place. Um, I, remember, uh, I remember doing some stuff with Make-A-Wish, you know, having fun, uh, you know, with, with um, some of the kids that would come by uh, entertaining people. Uh, she was always great for a laugh and, and so gracious and, uh, and fun to be around on set. Uh, it was, it was a good time. I, I miss her. I miss those days. 
And I suppose, uh, Judson, the, the last question before I let you go, and probably the hardest question I'm going to ask you, I normally finish my interviews with sort of this sort of question, but let's pretend there's a Walker, Texas uh, Rangers dictionary, an encyclopedia, and they put your character, Francis Gage, uh, in the dictionary, and they left two blank sentences underneath, and they asked you, Judson Mills, to write those sentences, having portrayed the character uh, Francis Gage. What would you like those two sentences to read to describe him? Um, a man who never lacked for a smile, but whose waters runs deep and whose honor and respect is true. And on that note, that's uh, just and cut. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and, that's what I got for you. And, and Judson, on that note, an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of Walker, Texas Rangers, and an historic sort of franchise action TV series, a cult classic TV series that ran for almost uh, 1993 to 2001. Nine seasons, you appeared yourself in 46 episodes as the character of Francis Gage at uh, we wish you and your loved ones all the best in these troubled sometimes and uh, no doubt uh, many more projects on the pipeline uh, once this pandemic is over for you. Uh, but for the moment, uh, Judson Mills, uh, take care. I appreciate you, Jim. Thanks for having me and uh, God bless. The best to you guys over there in Ireland and, uh, and uh, maybe I can visit sometime soon. You guys be well. Cheers. Thank you, Judson. Cheers.